Now, Rodney Jarrett wasn't alive to stand at the family secrets trial, but he definitely would have been a defendant. There was a lot of evidence uh, against Ronnie Jarrett uh, and everything that went on in his mother-in-law's garage. Uh, this guy here is, was definitely a killer, a professional burglar, a bookie, uh, a thief, and uh, was loyal to the Calabrese brothers. Now, during the trial, I thought this was pretty interesting. They had a lot of evidence that he talked about Everything that went on inside Ronnie Jarrett, mother-in-law's garage. If this poor woman had any idea what her son-in-law and his friends were up to, this was one of the stash houses of the Chinatown crew. And it was kind of like a, one of their headquarters where they would prepare for crimes, where they made bombs, explosives, where they committed murders. Now, during the trial, the uh, prosecution showed this was just one of many of the stash houses that the Chinatown crew used. This is where they had hundreds of thousands of dollars at any given time, an assortment of weapons, ammunition, bomb making materials, uh, burglary tools, you name it. Uh, this was their, uh, their home point for uh, all their major scores that they did. They also used Ronnie Jarrett's mother-in-law's garage to uh, work on and modify all their work cars from adjusting the back plate where it would automatically go up or go down. Uh, they would have different compartments in these work cars. Some would even be bulletproof. Uh, they would work on the engine. So they had a hyped up fast engine and do all kinds of things to these cars in the garage. Now, Nick Calabrese testified that they also used uh, the mother-in-law's garage to build the bomb that ultimately killed Michael Cagnoni. They had a hard time killing Cagnoni. The first bomb they made wasn't strong enough. And on the second attempt, the detonator blew off in Frank Calabrese's hand. It almost blew off his thumbs. They brought, they talked about that at the trial. <clears throat> now, Michael Cagnoni was a trucking executive that refused to pay the outfit any more money than he was already paying. They had a hard time killing him. First attempt, the bomb was too weak. Second attempt, it almost blew off Frank Calabrese's thumbs. However, the third attempt, when he pulled onto the ramp, Nick Calabrese testified that the bomb they made in the garage, he hit the detonator and it blew Cagnoni to pieces. Now, Nick Calabrese... And Frank Calabrese Jr., two of the government's star witnesses, testified that Angela Petria asked Frank Calabrese Sr. and Ronnie Jarrett to make him a special gun. They made this gun in Ronnie Jarrett's mother-in-law's garage. And this was the gun, this was the murder weapon that killed Sam Giancana. Now, obviously, the person that did kill Sam Giancana knew him very well, somebody that Momo trusted. He was cooking uh, delicious peppers and sausage. He let the uh, the killer in, and we all know what happened. Um, when I found out that Frank Calabrese and Ronnie Jarrett made the gun, I agree with Frank Calabrese Jr. that maybe Tony Ricardo had a hand in this. But as most of us know, it was probably Butchie. Now, in court, Nick Calabri testified on the stand that they lured uh, John Mendel to Ronnie Jarrett's mother-in-law's garage with the promise of a big score. Once he was there, he was jumped by Frank Calabrese, uh, Ronnie Jarrett, Nick Calabrese, and others. Frank handed Nick the knife and told him, you do it, and Nick sliced his throat ear to ear. Another murder at the mother-in-law's garage uh, was this tough guy here on the right, Nicholas DeAndre. After they grabbed him, they wanted to question him about uh, who tried to kill Ab Palato, boss of the Chicago Heights crew at the time. And Nick testified that Carlisi got a little carried away and repeatedly was cracking him in the head with the gun. When Nick was told to go check on him, when he went in the back seat, he was already dead. 
Now when Angelo the Hook finally went to the can, there's new leadership there in the Chinatown crew. So Johnny Apes took over. And allegedly, um, Ronnie Jarrett had issues with this. He did not get along. He did not respect Johnny Apes. Uh, his protectors, if you will, the Calabrese's were in prison. So he's kind of out on his own. Now, going back to 1999, Ronnie Jarrett was leaving his home on the 3000 South Low Block in Bridgeport. I think he was going to a funeral. And uh, a car pulled up. Guy in a ski mask got out, shot him several times, and killed him right across the street from his house where he died. Now, I wasn't in court this day at the Family Seekers trial, but Ronnie Jarrett's son uh, testified that he just got off a of home confinement, so he was free, and he heard that his dad got killed. He was shocked. He was devastated. And he asked Nikki F., who killed my father and why? Nikki F. told him, your dad had a problem with Johnny Apes. He refused to come in. And that's who killed your father and why. Now, the murder of Ronnie Jarrett is still unsolved. However, uh, this guy here, Tough Tony Anthony Calabrese, he was the prime suspect um, in killing uh, Ronnie Jarrett. Uh, the alleged driver testified that uh, Anthony was indeed the shooter. He got out in the ski mask and shot Ronnie Jarrett uh, right in front of his house, right across the street from his house. 